1944, China was at war with Imperial Japan and divided internally between the nationalists, led by Chiang Kai-shek, and the communists, led by Mao Zedong. Washington felt confident Japan would soon be defeated, but saw a civil war between the communists and the nationalists on the horizon. The nationalists had the support of the United States, but the U.S. wanted to know more about the communists, who were proving to be effective guerrilla fighters and rapidly gaining support in the countryside. The Pentagon decided to make official contact with the communists, sending a plane to their base in Yan'an. On board, a group of American soldiers and diplomats officially called the U.S. Army Observation Group, but unofficially known as the Dixie Mission, a reference to the southern states in the U.S. Civil War, since the Americans considered Yan'an, quote, rebel territory. Zhao Ma is professor of Chinese history at Washington University in St. Louis. Their primary focus is just to understand what is going on behind the, uh, behind the enemy lines. Along the way, they are able to even have a better sense of how communism mobilizes people. The U.S. observers lived alongside the communists, meeting with Mao and other leaders many times. Most of the original members of the Dixie Mission stayed in Yunnan for about six months. A smaller group stayed through 1947. John Peyton Davies and John Service were the primary diplomatic observers. Both were born in China to missionary parents and grew up speaking Chinese. How were they received by the communists? They show very strong interest in hosting this group of American observers. And they show their willingness to work with Washington, or at least to have some kind of a, a good working relationship with Washington. They arranged Americans to talk to uh, the communist military and the civil leaders. The Dixie mission came to a controversial conclusion. The communists would likely win the coming civil war, and the U.S. should establish ties with the CPC. I reported uh, on the communists uh, after my visit there that uh, I thought that they would probably win in China. Uh, and uh, the reason I think that that would happen is that they had the popular support. In a letter to Washington, John Service wrote, quote, This popular support gives the communists political power, which will make them a continuing and potent force in China. This is a fact which American policy must take into account. But back home in Washington, their recommendations ran into growing anti-communist sentiment. The Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union was taking shape. The so-called Red Scare was on the horizon. Charles Ray is a retired U.S. diplomat. He was stationed in China in the 1980s. You know, my view that that mission was doomed to failure before the planes ever took off because senior people in Washington were just basically not prepared to get in bed with, quote, communists. Those diplomats who went in with that mission came back and reported what they saw accurately and honorably. This is what we think is going to happen. And when it happened, they were blamed for it. Not only were their recommendations ignored, several of them were blacklisted, driven out of their careers and investigated by the FBI. John Service was arrested in 1945 over allegations he revealed his reports on China to journalists. A grand jury declined to indict him. They were accused of the communist sympathizers. And by the same time, what they did is just tell the truth. The communists were victorious and the People's Republic of China was established in 1949. But the U.S. had no official contact with the PRC or the Communist Party until the 1970s under U.S. President Richard Nixon. The way this country has dealt with China through the centuries, we've always been a day late and a dollar short in figuring out who the Chinese are and what it is they want. The cost of ignoring the Dixie mission? Years of potential cooperation lost. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington.